da, da, da. Welcome everybody to another episode here at Gideon's Tactical. Today, we have a new to the market CDS Explorer. CDS is a new company to particularly Amazon. They're selling their blades on Amazon right now. They're located in Spain. So these are Spanish made uh, knives that they produce. And uh, I have here today this Explorer, which is kind of a medium weight survival knife. And I love medium weight survival knives in the, like the six to seven inch you know, blade range. They get a lot done in a pretty compact package. And that's why I like them. But today, we're going to be looking at this knife and saying, really, ultimately, what are you good for? Because I hate to say this, and I always try and look for the best in a product in both shows. As always, if you guys have been watching the channel, show pros and cons. But I got to tell you guys that there's something about this knife that we're about to hit on um, that's a huge con to me. It doesn't perform like I was hoping it would, and it has to do with this little area right down here that we're going to talk about in just a moment. So um, with that being said, let's go ahead. I'll give you some basic specs, and we'll jump right into talking about the business end first, and we'll do the whole litany. You know, we're going to do ergonomics and sheath and value and all that, but uh, I'm going to really start out by pointing out some of the design features, particularly with the grind that they chose and how it's really, in my opinion, the downfall of the knife, and I hate to say that. I hate to say that because there's huge potential on this blade. So with that being said, let's look at the specs and start jumping into using and showing off this CDS Explorer and what it has going for it and what it doesn't. All right, let's go ahead and hit the basic specs here on the knife. Now, the overall length from tip to the back of the handle is 12 and a half inches. We're looking at from the ha handle scale right here to the tip of the blade, we're looking at seven inches, and then we're looking at a cutting edge of like 6.6, 6.7 um, on uh, the overall you know, length of the actual cutting edge. This is gonna be 0.2 inches thick, so very nice and stout, full tank construction, micarta handle scales that are multicolored micarta, bolted in, it's very nice. We're looking at a short hollow grind that we're about to talk on. The weight on this is gonna be 14 and a half ounces, just the knife itself, and then you're looking at a pound, um, 0.5. So um, just about a pound and a half on this overall weight with the leather sheet. So the leather sheet does absolutely add some extra weight to it. Just kind of give you some other de design features here. It has this unsharpened swedge right here that's very thick. You can see there's almost the thickness of the blade. It's almost like an optical illusion, but it gives you this kind of look of having a swedge right there. Just a kind of cool look. I like this right here into this very stout tip, very strong, durable tip that's going to hold up to a lot of abuse. Now, the steel on this is MV58. MV58, I've never used that steel before. Um, on talking to the company, they said it's somewhere in between uh, it's a Spanish type of steel. It's a steel that Spain uses, and uh, that's where this knife is made is in Spain. And it is a stainless steel, and it's somewhere between 440C and 420 high carbon. So it's probably like a 440B um, with a pretty decent heat treat. What I'm seeing from my use when it comes to edge retention um, as well as toughness and durability is like a good quality OS 8, uh, maybe like a good quality Buck uh, 420 high carbon, kind of right around in there. So, you know, I mean, it, it's going to be uh, a good stainless steel. It's not going to be a super steel by any means, and I wouldn't put it on the same level as like a good quality 440C. It doesn't have quite the edge retention that I would see with that type of steel, but a good quality OS 8 that you'd be getting out of cold steel, um, or maybe a good quality uh, 420 high carbon that you'd be getting like out of Buck, right around and that kind of eight, you know, range is what you're looking at when you're looking at edge retention, toughness, and durability on this MV58 steel. If I could kind of articulate that to you, having only used one knife ever with that type of steel, or if you're familiar with 440B, that style and that quality of steel is what you're looking at on this knife.
right, let's go ahead and talk here about the business end and the blade portion of the knife. Now, as you can see, this has a very similar profile to one of my favorite medium survival knives of all time, the Top Silent Hero. In fact, there's a lot of similarities between the two knives. Um, this is the deal. All comes down to grind. And I guess this is kind of popular over in Europe and from some Spanish companies, is to make very short, hollow grinds. As you can see here, this is a hollow grind, but it's very short, almost less than an inch from the edge to where it goes to a flat. And uh, I gotta tell you, what that equals is not good performance. I'm sorry to say that. This does not perform well and is in no way comparable in its performance to the Silent Hero that you just saw there. Not because of its edge retention, not because of the steel, not because of the quality of materials. It's purely because of the grind. If this had the exact same grind as the Silent Hero, which is a high saber grind, this thing would be awesome. And in some ways, I may even like it a little bit more because of the handle. The handle is a little more ergonomic than in the Rocky Mountain Tread on the Silent Hero. I may have liked it even more so. But because of that grind and how short it is, and at 0.2 inches thick with a cutting edge of 6.7, inches long this does not perform well in any survival tasks that i have put it through save chopping chopping is the only thing that i saw success with this knife because it basically has like an axe grind almost on the knife so it did bite into wood and remove material very quickly uh, and that was good for the size and weight this is a very good chopper and then with the dual lanyard and the ergonomics we'll talk about a little bit later um, this does for the size chop very well and i was pleased with that aspect of it but with batoning it bound up right away because it's such a short abrupt hollow grind it was very difficult had to put a lot more effort and it bound up a lot of the time going through the wood that i was splitting when i was batoning and then when you do any sort of carving whittling and feather stick making um, it can do it but in no comparison could it compete with again either that silent hero because of the grind angle or like uh, you know an se6 something like that those are going to perform a lot better in woods cutting tasks regardless of what you're doing when it comes to any sort of outdoor you know activity um you know this grind will be okay with nylon material and chopping that's really the only um success that i saw in the capabilities of this knife so it has great potential this could be a great high potential knife in its overall capabilities and particularly for those of you that live in high human environments that are maybe really like knives like the silent hero or the se6 you like that but you you know don't like the high carbon aspect and you're looking for a stainless steel i mean if this had a high saber grind this would be awesome and i think would perform a lot better as it stands right now though guys blade performance is really bad and ultimately you sit there and go what is this good for and really nothing when it comes to any sort of outdoor survival tasks and i'm really sorry to say that because there's huge potential in the knife so hopefully maybe in the future cds will change how they're doing their design with this and if they kept just about everything the same and just brought that to a very high saber grind i think this thing could really perform well and compete with a lot of really well-known good quality blades so that's my take guys on the blade performance for the explorer all right, let's go ahead and talk about the handle ergonomics and give you the rating on the handle ergonomics for this knife. And uh, if you've been watching the channel for a while, you can probably, and you know a little bit about knives, you probably can see right away, I'm giving this a five out of five on the ergonomic rating for this knife. The reason for that is with this multi-colored, multi-layered micarta handle scales that are very contoured, really rounded and very smooth and feel great in the hand. So regardless of which way you're holding the knife, you're doing reverse grips, doing anything and everything with this knife, it feels very comfortable in your hand. You can see I wear large size gloves and I definitely got over an inch on the back end to spare there. Then you have this kind of blank spot right here which acts as a designated finger choil and I can actually get up really nice and comfortable and how they've designated that in this kind of uh, maybe 45 degree angle between the thumb ramp and the lower um, guard here makes it so that I can get choked up. It's not gonna bite my webbing of my hand and I can get my really fine cuts done and I'm locked into place on that finger choil rest area, if you will. The other nice thing is that they give you somewhat of a flare out and then the dual lanyard, which you guys know I love that idea and it definitely helps keep it in your hand. Um, the thing to note, I mean, I don't think that this uh, thumb ramp is really needed. It doesn't get in the way because of how they've designed the knife, but it would have been nice just to see a natural, you know, straight off the back 
and the jimping right here is not needed and depending on how you're you know chopping with this knife can kind of bite into your pinky a little bit so uh, it's good and locked into place but those are some things to note but i'm willing to overlook them because of how contoured and ergonomic the knife feels in your hand and particularly you know for an extended period of time survival tasks you may be using this knife for a long period of time the ergonomics are fantastic with that five out of five on this explorer all right let's go ahead and uh, talk about the sheath here now they give you a leather sheath that has a very good um, idea behind it. I don't know how well it's executed. You're getting this, I would say, medium quality leather. It's not quite to the leather standards of some other sheaths out there, say like the leather sheaths from Tops um, or K-Bar, you know, some of those ones that come on the original K-Bar. You can tell that this is a little softer, a little more malleable and will wear out faster. You do have a drainage hole on the back there. You do have a belt attachment with buttons or a molly attachment. You can run this through molly and weave it and put it on a pack, which is cool. Or again, attach it to your belt without taking your belt off. I like that feature. And then as you saw right here, this double snap right here, so you could wear it scout style if you desire. So they've really thought through the different carry options for this sheath. And then you have a loop down here. It comes with this fire steel. Uh, and I would say this fire steel is Eh, you know, I mean, it's a basic, you know, it's not a Swedish light my fire fire steel uh, and the, it does have that 90 degree spine. So, I mean, it's nice that it offers that and that you could swap out that fire steel if you wanted to. Now, finally, for retention, it has this button right here that snaps into place to keep the guard uh, and the knife from coming out. So the knife will not come out and it's rather quiet. Very, very quiet. This is all good. There's nothing really to this point that I can complain about. It's how it's executed in removing this button snap. You really have to fight with this button snap right here. And when, particularly when it's on your belt, you basically have to use, you can't see, I'm trying to do it one hand and if it was on my belt, it's almost impossible. So you have to reach over and basically pry it apart, which means it's a good strong button, but you can see here I'm having trouble <sighs> loosening this up. There it is. So, I mean, try, try to do that on your belt. I mean, that's really, really hard. So that if this had been kind of designed a little different, maybe just be friction held or something like that, I think would have been a better option uh, for you. So uh, because of all of that, it makes it very difficult and you basically can't carry this on your belt, uh, you know, without it, you know, unless you just want to kind of leave it in there, but then if there's no friction and it would easily fall out. So uh, I'm going to give this a two out of five on the sheath carry rating for this Explorer. All right, how about quality on this Explorer? If we're talking about fit and finish, um, you know, angles, was it ground in well, um, you know, and all that. Now, you know, I gave it a pretty low rating on the sheath. Some of that was uh, the mounting ability and deploying it from the sheath. Um, but also, you know, the sheath leather wasn't the best I've seen, but when it comes to the knife itself, they've done a good job. There aren't any issues with lines or, you know, the micarta handles are, you know, off base and kind of, you know, kiltered weird or something like that. There's nothing like that. They line up well and it's ground in well. And then, you know, made in Spain with the steel that we've been talking about, the quality is there. And at the price point, you know, you're not getting ripped off in the sense of the quality of the knife. So I'm going to give this a very solid four out of five on the quality and just kind of ding it at a point because of the sheath and uh, some of the other things that we've been talking about throughout the, the um, video. But overall, the quality four out of five on this Explorer. All right, so let's go ahead and talk uh, value here on this Explorer. Now, again, if it had a different grind, um, this would be possibly a very good option for those of you, again, looking for stainless steel survival knives. Uh, as it stands right now, these are running for anywhere, depending on the handle uh, coloring, uh, you are looking at $110 to $115 on Amazon free shipping. So um, for the size, materials, thickness, I think that's a very reasonable price. Um, you know, the sheath would, in my opinion, need to be replaced pretty quickly because of the button snap and its inability to work very well. Um, so I would say that I would give this a value rating of four out of five, um, you know, and rather reasonable on the marketplace for, a, you know, almost seven inch stainless steel survival knife made in Spain, not a bad price point for what you're getting if they upgraded the sheath and again gave us a better grind angle. Well folks, it's time for us to wrap up this review for you on this Explorer. 
And uh, I got to tell you that name, as it stands right now, does not fit this knife. I would not go exploring with this knife. It just doesn't have the capabilities that I need in a mid-weight survival knife. And it all, again, comes down to that grind angle. If that grind angle is changed in the future, I would love to retest a newer designed version of this with a, the better you know, grind that we've talked about. And I think this ha would have great potential to be a great explorer knife. As it stands right now, guys, no way, I'm sorry, I can't recommend this knife to you. Now, CDS does have some very interesting other designs that I think may have great potential that have either full flat grinds or other saber grinds. So there are other knives out there in their design, and again, I'll have a link in the descriptions below and in their lineup that may have a better potential and may be a better option for you. So I would ch recommend going and checking them out because everything else about it, the quality, <clears throat> the fit and finish, those type of things, and the price points are very reasonable. It's just on this particular one, that short hollow grind, so my likability, sadly, is a two out of five. Two out of five has great potential, but really, when it comes down to it, you just look at it and go, what are you good for? I, I don't know. I don't know. What, I don't know what this would be good for. Can't, you can't really fight with it. It's too snub nose for that. You can't do a lot of survival tasks. You can't do bushcraft tasks. Um, and, and it just comes down to not really being a knife worth owning because of the grind, in my opinion, to this time, at this time, and hopefully in the future that'll be changed. So uh, guys, again, two out of five on the likability for this Explorer. As always, I hope that this video has helped you out with your purchasing decisions. Please check us out on all the relevant social media. There are links in the description below. And as always, please comment, subscribe, like, share this video. And always remember to stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.